It's Daryl Ray. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Daryl. Uh, I am glad to be back on with you guys. Only trouble is I'm by phone. I'd really rather be in the studio. Where yeah, I can well, well, we wish you were here, here with man. You afterwards. <laughs> I, you know, I uh, wish I'd prepared more of an intro to the ridiculous number of things that you do, but I think you're going to have to do that yourself in case there are noobs to the atheist experience watching. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, the reason I'm uh, talking to you guys is I want to talk a bit about um, my organization, our organization, Recovering from Religion. I'm sure you guys know about it. But Very well, yes. You may not. Yeah, so it's an organization I helped start back in 2009, and now we're literally worldwide with uh, dozens and dozens of volunteers helping us uh, do all sorts of stuff. But and uh, the, am the I focus, right? Am I right that that's an organization primarily for outreach to people who have been? Uh, well, no, I'm thinking of the clergy project. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> no, are, no, not. To, we do cooperate very closely with the clergy project. Yes. In fact, we one of our programs is very important to them. Our secular therapy project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. helps helps the clergy project. But this isn't but no, for ex clergy. Yeah. This is general outreach to uh, large numbers of people who are uh, maybe breaking away from their religious roots and need some kind of support network, right? Right, right. And whether you're a Mormon, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Christian, it doesn't matter. Anytime you start asking too many questions, you run in danger of getting uh, having all sorts of social problems, like your family might disown you, or you might get stoned to death in some countries, and you know, or at least you won't get any turkey on Thanksgiving. For some people in the United States, that's <laughs> that's possible. It's it's just just it's and it could be very dis disconcerting to um, say a teenager uh, who's just learning of their about their sexuality, and they're told they can't masturbate. Uh, or, that's or a real. Can't, that's uh, an American tragedy, right there. Yeah. <laughs> or, or an LGBT kid who's who knows they're gay but can't say anything, and you know what do they do? They're, where do these people turn when they realize their religion is going to send them to hell, or tell them, condemn them, or kick them out of the house? So that's why I founded Recovering from Religion to to help people. To give a place for people to land, to, to to talk to other people who've been through the same thing, and and have a caring but non non judgmental uh, ear to to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I really, right. I really, oh, I'm sorry <laughs> for interrupting, but go ahead. Uh, go ahead. You just uh, touched on the subject as far as uh, people that are LGBT that are just coming out, and um, you know, grew up in a religious household, live in a, a deeply religious family, things of that sort. Like I. Um, you know, a lot of my family was mostly accepting on that side, but uh, when I was first coming to grips that I was indeed gay, and before I'd actually come out to any of my family, um, I was lucky enough to have friends in college at that time uh, that really helped me uh, through that process and gave me support uh, to find who I was, um, you know, not to somebody that I can talk without being worried about being judged or being ostracized from things of that sort, just to have a good uh, framework there. So that uh, my friends were invaluable uh, during that time as far as uh, me really coming to grips with who I was at that time. Right, it, it right. It was just in, you know, I, I love what you were talking, uh, you were just talking about that it, this can be a resource for those out there who may not necessarily be so lucky as to have that framework already right. uh, in their lives because, I mean, I had... I went to college, I had um, a lot of friends who were open, um, I had some in high school a little bit as well, uh, who were open and accepting as well, but not everyone on that side. And so for yeah, those... If you're, born, if you're in a little town in, a little, in, in Arkansas, or right. if you're born in somewhere in Utah, there is no support system around you. Right, right. So I, I, I really you love it. A, yeah. So we've got several, we've got several programs that we try to help people. The, the, the first one I started was with um, a local meetup group, and I just said, anybody want to come talk about, you know, getting out of religion? This was back in 2009, and I had 11 people show up, 10 of whom I didn't know. And three hours later, the uh, restaurant um, manager was kicking us out because they were closing the restaurant down. And all I asked was, how did religion hurt you, and how are you better when, since you left? And, wow, it just opened a floodgate. 
And I re- recognized at the time that I had a tiger by the tail. There was there was a real need for people to talk about this stuff. And somebody who was non-judgmental. I wasn't trying to convert him. I wasn't trying to say don't believe in God or do believe in God. I I, I was just there as a neutral neutral ear, and they loved it. They loved it. Yeah. And before three months had gone, we had two more groups here where I live in Kansas City, and now we've got dozens of groups all over the United States, even in the world. We got groups in London. And, yeah, uh, I I was just talking to a to a friend about the show today, and I was saying that one of the most important reasons to be open and active about your atheism if you are a person who is in a position to get away with it, is that uh, there are all kinds of people who don't have those kinds of connections in their regular lives. And having someone to uh, get in touch with in private or on a show like this is very, very meaningful to them, which is something that I have learned over time and didn't didn't really absorb at first because I grew up in a secular family. But it's yep. uh, it's very difficult for people who are isolated in religious communities. Yeah, you don't know. Well, you do know probably how many people have been able to quietly check challenge their beliefs because they listen to the atheist experience. I <laughs> but you also I wouldn't know for sure. But I hope it's a lot. There's a lot out there. (laughs) It is. Oh, and by the way, if you are one of those people, feel free to write in at tv at atheistcommunity.org or uh, post something on the the Atheist Experience official discussion group on Facebook. (laughs) Plug, plug. The reason I mentioned that is because we get people coming to our groups, recovering from religion groups, our meetup groups, that say, I, I first started exploring this when I watched The Atheist Experience. Aww. And then Matt Delahunty made a talk somewhere and mentioned Recovering from Religion, and that's why I found your group. So you guys have helped us, and you are helping lots of people out there uh, mm-hmm. to find us. So we're, we're thrilled with that, and that's it's a really big, <laughs> big thing for us. Well, the second, awesome. the, the second, yeah, go ahead, Phil. Oh, no, no, I was, I was just about to, um, to talk about your telethon a little bit there, but if you had something else, yeah, you can go for yeah. it. Well, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, right now we're we're in fundraising. It costs us money to do some of the programs. One program I haven't mentioned was the hotline project. We have a hotline that people can call and a chat line that people can text us to ask questions, to deal with difficult issues, to get resources. And, and we're not a deconversion. It's not what our, we're all about. We're not into anything like that. We just want to help people get the best information. So we can point them to all sorts of resources and and w- w- you're one of the resources. We recommend the Atheist Experience <laughs> uh, to, what to is, our people. What is the phone number for the hotline project? The hotline is 184-I-DOUBT-IT. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a good one. 184-I-DOUBT-IT. <laughs> and it's been and, going for almost two years now. And you can call anytime, or are there hours? No. Yeah, there's there's hours. We wish we could call any time, but we don't have enough volunteers to. Mm-hmm. It, we're all nobody gets paid anything in our organization. It's all volunteers, so we depend on people volunteering their time to answer the hotline. And if you want to volunteer, and, you can also call the same number, and they'll set you up, right? No, no. Oh, uh, if sorry. they want to volunteer, they they can go to recoveringforreligion dot org and hit the volunteer button and fill out the information sheet. Because we don't, we will train you how to oh, answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. We aren't going to just let you start answering phones with no training. And Good. We're that's also that's how you know that there aren't uh, weirdos answering your call yeah, when you it, call the hotline project. Exactly. Yeah, you go through a, a vetting process, you go through a training process, you go through a supervisory process, and when you're finished, you have some really cool skills. Mm-hmm. Our volunteers have told me many times that, the skills I learned as a hotline and a chat line agent uh, helped me in my personal life, too. So, so it's like that's free kind of job a, training. A it, it really is, but, you know, we expect you to give some hours to this. Give us, yeah, yeah it is free job training. It's, it's free, free life training in, in, in some ways. Uh, so anyway, right now we are, at, you can go to our Facebook page, Recovering from Religion, and we have a live streaming uh, fundraising event because it costs us tens of thousands of dollars to keep this hotline open uh, all year round, and we need we need funds to do that, and among other expenses that we have. So I was calling in to let everybody know that 
that, oh, and we're interviewing all sorts of that um, you you would be familiar with. Probably we we've had uh, authors like uh, I think you've had uh, have you had David McAfee on your show? I know you guys know Shelley Siegel. Yeah, I know David McAfee. I don't. I'm not sure if he's been okay. on or not. And you know, you know, Shel, you know, Shelly Se- you know, Shelly Siegel, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, she's the uh, the current yeah. holder of our uh, intro for the show. Is that's actually, right, uh, Shelly that does that. There song. you go. Well, we we just finished interviewing her a few minutes ago, and oh, awesome. J T. Everhart was just on the show about 30 minutes ago. Seth Andrews is going to be on the show. Actually, right now, I think Seth's on the show right now. So, oh, anyway. Uh, I'm not calling to compete with you guys. I'm calling to say <laughs> if, if people would like to help us, uh, help other people. Because, you know, you uh, you guys at Atheist Experience and we at Recovery, we're in the same business. Absolutely. We're in the business of helping people. <laughs> Although business implies that we'd get paid, com- which we don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Although... <laughs> Although you can also donate to the atheist uh, community of Austin if you want to help us keep up this fine work. But first, do, uh, donate to uh, Recovering from Religion because uh, they need it right now. Right. Give, Tim, give 10 bucks to Recovering from Religion and give 10 bucks to Atheist Experience right now while you're, while you're listening to us. Sure. Yeah. So we'll keep but talking about this program. all show until we get a certain number of pledges. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, channel 13, uh, K-E-R-E, like the all over again. <laughs> uh, but the, the link to donate for Recovering for Lit, uh, from Religion is, uh, you can find it on their Facebook page, Recovering from Religion, on there. They have their live stream there, and they also have their donate and volunteer links there, but it's recoveringfromreligion.org right. slash donate uh, to make that donation right. uh, for right. RFR. And if you need... And I would like to tell about... Yeah, well, and I was going to say, if you need someone to talk to, you can see that number at the bottom of the screen, but for podcast listeners, it's 184. I doubt it. Right, right. Go and on. you can also text. We have a whole text function. Hmm. Oh, wow, I didn't but know that. But there's a third program that's really important. And that is the Secular Therapy Project. I was actually on the Atheist Experience about a year ago talking about this. Mm-hmm. But that's um, there's a lot of lot of people who need mental health help, mental health help, and they try to find it, and they end up having a therapist that wants to pray with them or send them back to church or read a Bible. And I mean, it's terrible. There are some really bad psychotherapists out there that are infected with religious ideas. And you know, I use that word "infected" intentionally. Right. Um, so, because of my book, the God virus. The God virus, indeed. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, if you want to find a good therapist and uh, you're concerned you don't want to get a Catholic or a Christian that's going to send you back to church, just go to seculartherapy.org, and that's a part of our recovering from religion programs, seculartherapy.org, and you can find a, you can register and, and find a therapist that will is secular and evidence-based. They won't, they don't use any woo-woo, new age kind of bullshit, so. Right. <laughs> can I say that on the air? Uh, the you can, okay. we, we're on the internet. We have no fucking FTC regulations. <laughs> <laughs> as oh, far as I know, I now that. I'm about to get us <laughs> oh, in trouble. <laughs> we're gonna get that letter now. <laughs> uh, and uh, and well, also, speak, warning, I'm sure. speaking of uh, fucking. <laughs> you can also check out Daryl Ray's awesome book, uh, Sex and God. <laughs> yeah. You like thank that segue? You, thank you. And my podcast. <laughs> yeah, I do. And my podcast, the Secular Sexuality Podcast, where we talk about all things perverted. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Russell and Russell and Phil would be, are very comfortable on my podcast. Probably. Right in there. Well, uh... <laughs> 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 but all right. Yep. So anyway, that that was what I wanted to talk about. Happy to talk about all the stuff we do, but I know you got callers that are probably waiting to tell you you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is all what right. I appreciate well, about Daryl Ray. He gets my humor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes. 
anyway, have, have people have people have people go to uh, Facebook Recovering from Religion and donate and and just listen. There's some cool <clears throat> interviews. Seth Andrews is on right now, so cool people talking about their journeys out of religion. So okay, well, it's always great talk to talk to you guys to you. later. Yeah, it was I'll awesome see you later, Daryl. All right. Bye-bye. All right, bye bye. Bye. All right, that was fun. Right. There's uh, one more thing I, I will mention before you uh, jump yeah, to a caller. Um, uh, as you all know, every time I'm on the show, I usually announce the upcoming volunteer things that the ACA is, evol- is involved in. And the next one we have coming up is the Texas Ramps Project uh, for the Austin area. That'll be on December 10th, um, usually starting about 8 a.m. Uh, there was a hiccup uh, for last month, unfortunately. Um, the city of Austin, the permits, um, they kind of, stopped all of a sudden and so mm-hmm. they uh, the texas ramp projects had had to get that worked out and they were able to do so but unfortunately they weren't really able to build during november like they wanted to so uh, they're going to try to build at least four or more ramps on that one day of december 10th mm-hmm. and the aca will be helping out with one of those ramps to try to get everything together for the holiday season because of course people are traveling during the uh the later weeks of that so we're not going to wait till the fourth Saturday, like we usually do, it'll be that December 10th. So that's the one change on that side. But um, for info, if you want to sign up or uh, if you want to volunteer, all that kind of good stuff, it's on our Facebook page, it's on our meetup page, and it also appears on our website. And so uh, just check back there about a week or so prior to that, uh, that bill, so like December 3rd or so, and we'll have the actual exact location of where that bill will be. And just sign up and feel free to come out. I'll be I'll bring some water uh, usually, but you f- you can feel free to bring snacks, things of that sort, uh, while you're out there. Since you know we don't really know how long it's going to be, depending on how long the ramp uh, takes. It's usually about four hours or so. Uh, so I'll put on there eight to twelve thirty. So come on out uh, for ACA members or non-members at that. We had some <laughs> volunteers from uh, you uh, from uh, the San in- uh, not the San Antonio College, goodness, the Austin County, uh, the Austin Community College. Uh, there are some volunteers out there, and there's a, a couple of people from. UT Austin that were also interested who were not ACA members that were going to come out anyway. So uh, it's for everyone that's open to it. Just read about it on our website, Facebook meetup, and um, you get all the information there. You guys are doing great work. Thanks. Cool.